Morning everybody. Aid here from Dale Skidmore Second Hand Tires with episode 29 in the boat restoration. I left off last time where I just bought the wood to replace the um, supports in the rear buoyancy chamber and I've cut three lengths of this. The, uh, the first and the middle section are only just able to go in through the hole but if I take more of the uh, seat away then I have to make these longer and it's a, a case of they're always going to be just big enough to go through the hole. I'll show you what I mean. I've made up three battens which go across which I can clamp them to to lift them up against the underside of the uh, buoyancy chamber and as I was saying this is as, as long as they can be because oh, cracky that's tight it seems to tighten up since last night Believe me, that just fits in there. And well, this one's just the same length, give or take, as well. And then the back one is, uh, is actually wedged in there virtually, but that one's easy to come out because it's that much shorter than the others. So uh, we've got a decent amount of overhang underneath to get some glue on. And uh, this is as, as long as they can be because oh, cracky that's tight. It seems to tighten up since last night. So I'm going to epoxy these up on the undersides and where I can so that we can glue them in later on with thickened epoxy. On the previous uh, video I put out I forgot to add in that I'd oiled the centre thwart and the back seat. I did the same as I did for the runners underneath and the keel with boiled green seed oil and uh, thinned at first with methylated spirits. So I've done the same to these two and they've come out quite nice. It's one of those things that the uh, finish is easy to maintain rather than keep varnishing or stripping varnish because it breaks down under UV light apparently and um, needs sort of sanding and redoing every year but this is a sort of a, a maintenance you can carry on throughout the year just by rubbing on some more linseed oil with a rag and it builds up a sheen after a couple of free coats but uh, it's easy to keep up and it's darkened down the especially the, the new white oak and it's English oak on the centre thwart because I think that's a old um, bookcase that I salvaged and also after Epoxying the slats, I've uh, glued them in underneath the top of the buoyancy tank and they're uh, going off nicely. I used a fair bit more epoxy than I've used for most of the stuff on here to do it and uh, mixed it with the flour to thicken it. And I'm confident that that is a good thing to do because the bolt holes I sunk into the workbench top I filled with this stuff and it's on permanently on 
exposed to the elements out the, well, the elements, the light and such like in here, and it's not broken down, it's not discoloured, and it's not sort of gone mouldy. So I'm confident that that using that as a thickening agent is as valid as any of the other things that you can use. Uh, so they're going off now, and then I should be able to glue in the uh, the plate I cut off and fill that and then paint over it and it should be well you know reasonably invisible especially once it gets the seat back on it and just to have a little festival of thickened epoxy I've glued the two ribs across the king plank I've only glued them in the middle they're still unglued at the ends so I can take the king plank out of the way when I need to do whatever I'm going to do when it comes to filling the um, bilge of the keel and for, for the uh, opening here doorway, hatchway just purely because I had something left over so I tossed it in there the epoxy is all cured now dry fit of the piece I cut out. There's still a little bit to do because I want to reinforce the edges where they're not covered by the wooden slats so I've got to make up some little extra bits to glue in to the gaps between the slats just to give it something to stop it from deforming in that area which be a natural weak spot otherwise. There we go. A little bit high there. A bit low there. But that's gone in a bit canted for whatever reason. But I can take off some of that high spot and that'll bring that back down level again. There will be some fairing in to do once it's uh, glued in, but I do definitely need to put some wood in to support these edges where there's a gap between the slats as well. So there's a little bit more work to do on this, but it's all, all of a one piece now and I do feel happy that I've done it. I know I'm going to have to do it anyway really. I was, uh, no way around it once I knew that it was uh, not good then I couldn't really uh, stand the thought of it being still not good okay so let's see what happens when we undo these now they do still spring which I expected plank, a bit of uh, fairing in and that'll be fine. That's all the woodwork from underneath the rear seat, the top of the flotation chamber, epoxied in. I'm really very pleased that I've done it because I knew really straight away that uh, it wasn't good to leave it like it was because eventually it was going to be an issue. So uh, I'm going to level this all off now because there is a couple of places where it's a bit proud as um, I found by putting the cover back on. That should be enough to uh, push it down into the thickened epoxy and uh, let that cure. And then I should go round and fill and fair 
the uh, the high spots and the gaps where the saw kerf is and then I found some more uh, bilge paint the other day in the cupboard I forgot I bought recently and uh, I'm going to paint out that area again and she'll look good as new Traditionally the thwarts or the seats in a boat are held on by things called knees, the same as I've used for the corners of the transom and the foredeck. But I've come up with a, something which I've seen in a few boats, which is uh, some bent uh, wood strips rather than uh, cut a whole knee, which takes up a bit of room. I thought I might do two on each end of the, certainly the rowing thwart, and that involves thinning down some oak and then I shall soak it because it's only very short, they're 30 centimetres long so I shall soak them for a, a couple of days and then put them in the bag and steam them and then hopefully bend them into place if this doesn't work I expect you might find out or you might not, I don't know but at the moment I've uh, sawn up some off, an off cut chopped into foot lengths and then um, slap them with double sided tape down onto this board and then plane them all down to about 6mm and I shall then bung them in to soak. I'm not sure yet whether I shall bend them around a former or just put them in place and bend them onto the seat and clamp them into place at what point looks the best for them so we'll have to again once again we'll have to wait and see this is the second coat I've put on to finish off the transom seat I'm just doing it straight out the can with the roller because uh, it's only a small area I suppose I should have cleaned up the rust first, but uh, I uh, need to get some more bits of wood for the boat, so I can't go on this afternoon with any more, and besides which I don't want to make too much mess because that paint's still curing, but uh, I dug out the vice from under the bench and cleaned the rust off it and freed it up, and I've been doing a little bit of nail making. When I ordered the copper nails for the boat I made sure that I made them overly long so that I could use the uh, off cuts if I fancied it to just finish off around the outside of the foredeck so I'm just having a little play around and seeing how they turn out and then um, I shall probably use them just to line the edges of the foredeck and uh, that will sort of finish off that bit of the boat. I'll make up my mind finally in the end when I do it, but uh, they're going to maybe uh, look all right. You'll have to excuse the shaky cam for a bit, but uh, I've uh, just been and got these inserts. Oh, I'll go that way, keep my feet out of the way to hammer in, I've drilled out these holes, it looks like they're wooden pads underneath from what I've just uh, come through on the uh, with the drill saw if you don't have to take them that one won't go all the way in I think it might be because there is a nut underneath it but uh, I'm going to fix this plank down with the uh, inserts and that will hold the floor in and stop it from bouncing around too much whilst we're uh, towing. Right, that's got them screwed in. I might actually take out those washers and just countersink them in. 
but that's all that's holding the whole of the floorboard in place. I don't think it needs anything more than that. Uh, pretty sure it won't really, because they're just going to be held down by their own weight anyway. But it finishes off the planking as well. So uh, I'm just going to sit here and dream for a bit about gently rocking in the boat. <laughs> Daft. Oh yes, I just remember what I was going to say. The uh, idea I originally had was to maybe paint or varnish the floorboards and something I've watched recently is a fantastic guy called Roger Barnes who has a lovely clinker built 14 foot dinghy that he sails around all over the place. His floorboards are just finished with um, cupronol. The uh, what's it called uh, stuff they use on fences because it soaks in, gives weather protection, but also isn't slippery like it would be if it's painted or varnished. And going along with the oiling of the seats and the thwarts, uh, it seems to me like it might be a good idea to do the same thing. So uh, that will be the next job. Hopefully, it's going to be dry tomorrow. So I can do that. Cool. Oh, bloody great bumblebee flying around in here. I tried turning the lights off so he'd go outside, but he uh, he's up this end, so uh, a bit too far away for any light. Anyway, I've been looking at the hatch cover for the prow, and uh, I sort of started to think maybe rather than two two doors. If I was to make it solid, I would have a table which I could spread between the centre and the forward thwart, which might come in handy. And just pull it out, it was one piece, and just lay it across. And it'll sort of, it doesn't quite fit with the curve of the side of the boat. But it's near enough, and it will. Uh, be an extra little workspace because the the gap between the two of them is quite far so if I'm having uh, a gas burner on there or a couple of gas burners for cooking and boiling the kettle and stuff then um, it might be easier to do it on a on a table so uh, I've glued together the three pieces that you can see here and they've been held in place clamped into place so that they stay nice and stable and I'm going to take them out now there's still a couple of little bits to do to fill in the ends which are where's my lens uh, just those little bits there and there but uh, I'm going to leave two holes for ventilation and as handholds So I'm going to put a couple of twisty over things just to hold it in place. But uh, by the time I come to finishing it, possibly some of it with epoxy and the faces with uh, linseed oil, I think um, I'm going to have to do some shaving of it anyway to make it fit again because obviously there is a certain amount of thickness 
on a, on a finish. But uh, I make it nice and snug now, and then all I've got to do is a little bit of work to, to make it fit again, rather than a lot of work to get it to stay fitted, if that makes any sense. And it should fit. Lay down some of this. Which isn't too bad a, an area. Or anything to uh, be used on. If you can see it over this side. But certainly it's good enough to make a as a flat working surface whilst I'm uh, afloat. try because I don't use it anymore as a, a tea urn and uh, it's just sitting there so I thought I'd get some use out of it and see if this works to boil the wood up and then I can bend it in place rather than using the bag and the um, wallpaper stripper steamer so we'll give that a go now short but the top ends I don't really need to soak because they're going to tuck up underneath the rail on the inside so um, really they don't need to be as flexible at that end as they do at the other going to work. I imagine it would. It should be really. Yeah, they're just poking out the top. I think there's a max mark on there but uh, really just for safety to stop it boiling over. boiling for an hour. Once it comes to the boil, I think I'll boil it for an hour and see how flexible they are. I've got some gloves over there. So once they come to the boil, I'm going to bend one into place and I'm going to have to work out and clamp these bits of wood so that they stop them from sliding off. But basically I just tuck it in under the thwart, 
So basically I'll just tuck it in under the rail and bend it down so it's flat along the seat. There's only these one, one screw to hold it in. Once it's all dry it should be stable enough at that. And uh, there'll be two on each end of this one and one on the end of the far one, the, or the most forward one, one on each side because it's held underneath the uh, frame for the foredeck. Well, that was only a very partial success. Maybe I didn't boil them for long enough, well, I don't know, but uh, as you can see here, three of them split. I did make the splits worse as I was getting them out again, but uh, that was a bit of a non-event. I didn't spend too much time making them anyway, I just sliced off some strips of wood about a quarter of an inch thick, six mil thick, and hay fever was bad today, even though it's raining. Um, yeah, I just split off some six mil strips of oak and boiled them up for a bit. I left them soaking for a few days, obviously, try and waterlog them, because I've seen that used <coughs> in uh, boat building, especially for clinker built boats. And uh, I thought it might work, but it has partially. And what I might do actually is uh, use these as templates to make some more, but I'll make them out of thinner strips of oak and bend them with a bending iron and laminate them up in a jig. So uh, I've not spent too much time on it, really, in the great scheme of things. So that's not such a bad thing. And I know a little bit more now than I did before. I know white oak bends well under steam, but uh, obviously it's just a little bit too thick for it. So I make it up out of some thinner stuff, and uh, they'll be thicker, so they'll be stronger. Planed up the offcuts off the end of that central curved piece and set them in at the ends of the gap. And now I'm going to make both the holes a better shape and uh, equal to each other so I can put my hands in and pull out the hole of the hatch uh, easily and also providing ventilation for the deck under the foredeck. I suppose that'd be the hold maybe or forward cabin. I don't know. Well, there's a couple of handholds let in and uh, rough sanded to shape. This is still very tight to fit this hatch so obviously when it comes to putting any finish on it's going to make it too tight but uh, as I've said before start off tight and then you can always make it looser. Well, there we go. I've glued together the hatch and the top rail. The king plank's still free at the moment, but uh, the, that assembly is fixed to the boat with the knees. I've put tape around the sides, ready to put Sikaflex in there with the gun, rather than glue it with fiberglass because it gives it a bit of flexibility and. I think it's the, the best way of fixing to the sides because if you start fiberglassing it, if in the future you want to take it off for whatever reason, then uh, I think it'll be more of a problem to, to take it off than with it being sicker flexed in. So I'm just going to leave that to go off now, cure. I've already checked and the hatch still goes in there again. It is slightly tighter even now than it was before because of the extra uh, layer of uh, epoxy that went in. But that means that I can sand down the hatch and it will go in and fit better or fit as good as it can. Well, I don't know how well that stands out, but uh, looking at it, that's a lovely little bit of oak there. The medullary rays are quite uh, apparent. 
on one piece anyway, it's made out of two planks. This is another bookcase side and uh, it's the front seat. I put linseed oil on the bottom as per the centre thwart and I'm leaving the top bare at the moment until I fix it in and also the back edge as well because uh, I'm going to put some thick flex on it and uh, then later on when I've bent them I'm going to put the knees on at the front edge as well and tuck them under the rail and that should hold it all nice because it's going to be held in underneath the side panels of the uh, hatch cover or the hatch as well so it will be locked in nicely into place just sicker flexed this bench into place and uh, clamped it with some of my wedgy type sash cramps to the uh, frame of the hatchway and I forgot to put some tape on the bottom but I taped up the sides before I sick effects and filled in the edges and the sides where the tape was has come out nice and clean obviously but I should have put some tape in across there I forgot all about it. It's what you do when you're concentrating on something I suppose but uh, now I think the next thing to do is to glue in place the king plank and the ribs. So I've clamped it up, it's been clamped up all the time anyway, just to keep it all square. I've clamped it up now so that all the clamps are set and I'm going to take it apart, and knock up some epoxy, coat the ends and then clamp it up, let it go off. It's going to be a simple straightforward job because everything's locked in place now, all this is locked in place and uh, it can't go anywhere else but where it is. That's all buttoned up now. I might have some issues with the clamps in the morning but uh, I've got soldering iron to undo them if they're stuck. I'm off for a barbecue now, just down the garden. See you later. I think I might wrap this one up here now. I'm uh, marking out the underside of the foredeck to know where to put the glue, the epoxy, when I uh, come to glue it on. Um, done a little bit, there's a bit more progress, and uh, she's starting to look shipshape now. So uh, I think I'll say thanks for watching. Thanks as always for your comments, I do appreciate them. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Cheerio.